everything is connected. From the tiniest of insects, to the largest of forests, and everything in between. When an ecosystem is in balance, all the plants, animals and the communities that live within it can thrive. But when trees are cut down and land is burnt, the soil loses fertility and its ability to sustain life, leading to erosion, Please tell us a little bit because you got the uh, alternative uh, Nobel Prize. Uh, can you explain us a little bit um, what this prize is about? Probably not everyone knows really um, the sense of it. And um, why you exactly got it and how did it help you in your project to, to get this award? Sure. So, so um, the founder of the Right Livelihood um, Foundation went to the Nobel Prize prize committee and offered to to um, put money into the Nobel Prize if they would include categories of uh, social justice and environment. And at that time, uh, they refused. And so th this is how it has the, the alternative name, uh, alternative Nobel Prize. But the proper name for the award is the Right Livelihood Award. Uh, and the reason why I received that, it's, it's in recognition of my contribution to, to reforestation in, in developing countries. Yeah, so this, this award has nothing to do with the Nobel Prize in Stockholm, I mean, in Oslo, sorry. Sorry, it has nothing to do. That, that's correct. It's a separate foundation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, okay. So um, uh, you, you, you're an agri, um, you, you're an expert in agriculture, you, you are an engin agricultural engineer, or uh, what is your, your background? Yeah, yes, I, I studied agriculture at university. So not forestal engineering? No, no, no. but I, I, grew, I grew up loving trees. I, my home... Uh, the home that I grew up in was right at the base of a small hill that was covered in Australian bushland. Mm -hmm. And that was my playground. Uh, and I, I can remember, you, you know, um, uh, we visited our grandmother in a nearby town every Sunday. And m many of the farms there, the farmers had cleared the hills. And I, I was just a little boy, but I'd be looking out the window of the car and dreaming in my head, I was on those hills planting trees. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. But it takes such a long time uh, for a tree to grow. So it's really like a long-term dream, no? I mean, it, the whole project, that, that it, it, can that really help the planet? I mean, um, forestation, is, uh, is, deforestation is very important, but, uh, but how, how can... Can it save? We, we, we have no time anymore. How can, how can it? Well, this, this is a common perception that trees mm -hmm. take a long time to grow. And, and certainly some species, that's true. They, they grow very incrementally, but it's not true for all species. And especially in the method that I, I champion, farmer managed natural regeneration. If you are growing a tree from a, a cut tree stump, that's still alive, uh, think about it, 50% of the mass of the tree, the roots and the trunk, 50% is still there. You just can't see it. And so this tree stump has deep roots accessing nutrients and moisture and stored sugar. And even in very dry climates, these trees can grow very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And from the first moment on, they have a good impact on, on climate. From the first moment... You plant them, that's what you want to say, no? They have well, a positive impact on... Oh, yes. Yeah. So firstly, in, in farmer-managed natural regeneration, we're not planting, we're regenerating what's already there. So th this is a very important distinction. Now, the, the two methods are complementary, but they're different. So, yes, uh, in, in the first year, the contribution will be small because it's still a small, a small shoot, but every leaf is drawing down carbon dioxide and building it into the, the body of the tree. 
So it's making a small contribution uh, towards mitigation, towards mm -hmm. drawing down carbon dioxide. But at the same time, it's contributing to human beings being able to adapt. As the leaves drop to the soil, they're enriching the soil. The, the small tree itself is lowering the temperature. It's providing alternative uh, foods and fodder for livestock and eventually fuel wood. And so when as the plunges, it's becoming harder and harder to grow food, uh, both crops and livestock. The, the temperature, the extremes in uh, uh, weather patterns, it, it's making it more and more difficult to grow food. Mm. However, if you have trees in the landscape, it's another element that's more resilient, providing different products. And the more biodiversity that you have in a landscape, the, the less likely that you'll have total failure. M maybe there's a heavy rain event or an insect pest attack or a drought. The more biodiversity you have, the less likely you will have a hundred percent failure. Something, something will be resilient to those adverse conditions. So, so even the shortage of water um, is is not. I mean, it's not a problem because, of course, we always think like uh, where where is rain? There you have forests, no. Uh, but like here in the south of Spain, um, it's a very dry land, and we we're suffering drought right now. And of course. Um, my family ourselves we are planting <laughs> trees there we try to plant trees there and it's very hard i mean uh, you need um, um, a special mechanism uh, but it's also uh, restricted you, you 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 the use of water so um what are the right uh, trees to plant in 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 a continent as well like like africa where big parts are suffering drought as well so again this is the distinction when, when you plant a tree usually you have a very small root mass and you you have to you have to uh, baby that tree along you have to water it you have to protect it you have to do all sorts of things so it survives long enough to get a uh, stand on its own feet so to speak when you regenerate a tree that already has a root system then watering is not an issue. Uh -huh. It has deep roots already mm -hmm. and access to soil moisture. And if, if they're very deep, access to the water table. So, so, so then, what, yeah. what, what are your favorite trees to plant? Because you say that it depends on the species as well. So, so, so what is really the, the, the star tree in, in this climate change? The trees that we, it depends probably Uh, if it's for for the city, no, because in the city it can be very important to have more trees as well to clean the air. Um, but um, um, in in drier places, what are the trees you would recommend or you are pl uh, planting? Well, well, if you're planting, my, my first choice would be the indigenous trees of the country, okay, okay. because generally they're adapted to the soils and the climate. Okay. And th there's been ages in the past when the climate was hotter and drier, and, and it's varied over time. So within the genetics of trees, there's a certain level of um, uh, capacity to, to adapt. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I'll come back to this again. For the most part, I'm not planting trees. Yeah. So <laughs> in, in these landscapes, uh, particularly in developing countries, but even in European and Western countries, um, in many cases, once the forest has been chopped down, there are tree stumps in the soil yeah. or at the very least native seeds. And so the process that we go through with the communities is to encourage what's already there to grow. And when you think about it, it's, it's much, much faster because it's already in place. There's no nursery. There's no transport. There's no planting yeah. or watering. It's, it's faster. It's cheaper. And the species that are already there are the most likely ones that will survive. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
of course, the question that we all have is if, if I mean, all these initiatives um, are beautiful, and but they're also experts that say, actually, we can't do anything anymore. I mean, um, the, the, the earth is going to survive and some animals, but probably the human species will, will not survive these changes. What, what do you think about that? I mean, is there... If, if I, well, if I believe that, I would not get out of bed in yeah. the morning. Yeah. Certainly, certainly we're in for a hard time. Things are going to get much, much more difficult. The, the sad truth about human, uh, human beings is we, we leave it till the last minute. And when we hit, feel the heat of the fire, that's when we start to take action. And th this was the case in Niger Republic where I lived. People were warned for decades, stop cutting down the trees. It will lead to desertification. Your farms will lose fertility. You'll go hungry. People kept cutting down the trees. And it wasn't until 1984 that the, the mindset of people that were finally ready to change their behaviour because now it was obvious to everybody that they would have to leave their own country because it could no longer provide for them. 1984 was the turning point. So I, I, I have hope. I, I'm sad that species that will be lost, people will suffer, conditions will get much more difficult, but I'm hopeful because um, it's, it's still possible. It's still possible to redeem something. And um, the, the story, my experience in Niger, it's a story of hope. The situation when I went there was hopeless. Uh, you know, the, because there were no trees, the wind speeds were up to 60 kilometres per hour. The soil surface temperature, even 70 degrees Celsius. Imagine the growing conditions. It's, it's almost impossible. Mm. And year after year, because of climate change plus this deforestation, uh, the droughts were becoming more severe and more frequent. It was hopeless. People were hungry. People were leaving. And yet this, this method, working with nature instead of destroying it and fighting against it, it spread in Niger at a rate of a quarter of a million hectares per year for 20 years. Five million hectares, 200 million trees without planting a single tree that's incredible. I mean, yeah, I, I really, I, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm not an expert in that, but I saw that when a tree, when a tree is cut, that somehow the tree is dead after a while. Some species die, particularly pine, cypress. They don't have the, the genetics to, to re-sprout. But if you ha you're in Spain. Yeah, in yeah, Madrid. If you Madrid, you, you would have some Australian acacia, uh, eucalyptus trees there, I think. You, you have Australian eucalyptus? Yeah, we have all kind of uh, um, trees that they, I mean, they're not um, uh, ardictinous uh, trees. I mean, they, they yeah. the Arabs, and they, they uh, exported a lot of trees. Like also, the, it seems that the palm tree is not something that was that is uh, that was a uh, normal and or natural in, yeah. in in Spain. Yeah. So the the palm tree won't regrow. I, I was using the example of eucalyptus because when you cut it, it sprouts profusely. Yeah. And I, I don't know if you saw pictures of the Australian bush after the severe fires, but five six months later, all of these black trunks were completely covered in new new buds. Oh, I didn't see that. No, that's beautiful. I mean, I think most of the people don't know that. You know, that's yeah. a problem about all also media, media covering because they always show the negative side, but then it would sure. be beautiful to show that as well. I mean... Um, yeah. and, and in your case, I don't know all the species, native species in Spain, but I would suspect that the oak tree... The, the poplar, the willow, these trees mm -hmm. regrow very well after cutting. Mm -hmm. and, and so I, I just use that as an example. Can you imagine across millions of hectares around the world, people have cut trees for generations 
but but the stumps and the seeds are in the ground mm. and what's really needed is not so much te uh, technology not so much high finance but a change in mindset which leads to a change in behavior because na nature wants to be restored and it has the ability to but we keep suppressing it burning cutting plowing grazing yeah we keep suppressing it but it wants to come back you must be very sad about the the, the war right now because it's it's putting apart so many efforts uh, it's 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 really postponing so many things that we already had in la online no that we had in line and to 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 to, to happen and um it's so, it's so tragic and yeah. um it, uh, the the lives the The, the infrastructure, everything. Think, think now, in, and, and in terms of climate change, not the humanitarian issue, yeah. which is yeah. huge. Terrible, it's, yeah. it's terribly sad. I, I've been heartbroken, actually. But think now, when reconstruction comes, <laughs> what happens to the forests? <laughs> so it's going to. It's, it's not just set us back in time. It, it's actually um, uh, also contributing to climate change because they're going to cut down more forests no and the whole uh, energy policy is changing now again we're going for uh, fossil energy again i mean that's really it changed every everything suddenly again i mean even the the greens and the german government they have to deal now with qatar and other countries to get the gas i mean we 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 yeah it also shows we haven't been in time we're too late because uh, we can't compensate with renewables. And we have to, 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 to consume less. I mean, no one is saying that. Uh, no one of the politicians is saying that, but we have to consume less. It's over. I mean, the party's over. I mean, I, I don't care. I never liked parties, so it's okay. But, but why no one dares to say it, really? Well, there's, there's voices, aren't there? Greta. Um, Greta Thunberg, yeah, but she's not a politician. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I love it. The, the Hausa language that I, I learned in Niger, they have a saying that um, the children of today are the big people of tomorrow. And tomorrow is not that very far away. Yeah, Greta's true. generation are coming. So, and she, <laughs> yeah. she's warned the politicians. She said, <laughs> we're coming. So, yeah. You, you, do you have kids yourself that going to follow your, your initiative when the day when you're not there anymore, that going to, you have, you, you well, I, planted I, seeds? <laughs> I, I have four biological children and perhaps many thousands of um, adopted. Uh, people that I've influenced. Yeah. <laughs> so my, my own children, they're, they're certainly doing good in the world, not, not especially in, in this sector of environment and climate. But um, what's very, very satisfying is I've, I've had the opportunity to speak and influence to uh, many, many people. Mm. And, and there are activists out there around the world. Yeah. That's that's great to hear because that's what we what we really need to spread the word and the knowledge. I mean, what we learned today. I mean, I think many people didn't know that a cut tree still is alive and can. And we should, yeah, we should. Uh, and and if, if I could put it in context, a, a study was done. So I, I moved to Niger with my wife in 1981, and the study was done in the two decade period prior to 1980 and they concluded that um, uh, I think it was 240 million dollars had been spent on forestry in three countries and a lot of those trees died but if, if you tell it up okay which, which one survived it cost about eight thousand dollars per hectare for these for these trees eight thousand dollars per hectare and Once the project money was finished, th there's no ongoing activity because it, it's all dependent on external aid and, and support. Yeah, 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 in, yeah, yeah. In, in the 20 years since this method, FMNR, Farmer Managed Natural Regeneration, since it was adopted and embraced by the farmers at no additional external cost, just the initiative of the farmers, th there are now 
5 million hectares, uh, 200 million trees. And if I was to do an estimate and, and spread the initial investment across that, it, it costs less than $2 per hectare. Yeah. Now, now extrapolate. Think of those 3 billion hectares that I mentioned. Yeah. And you have a choice. You're, you're the um, finance minister. Are you going to spend a hectare to restore this land or $2? Which, which would you do? Yeah, it's a, it's a matter uh, of knowledge. Right now, really, we, we need to, and to do a lot of calculations. I always say like Mars is as important as never now because you have to calculate everything. I mean, uh, simulate everything, you know, that's so important. I mean, we have so many smart people and they, they should put all the efforts in, 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 in how we should organize agriculture, um how should we should build cities and everything so yeah there it's great that you planted seeds and that there will be more people like thinking in the circle i mean the circle economy there's no other way uh like we used to do but now that we, we, we suddenly started to speculate and everything so yeah <laughs> hopefully we, we get back to the roots as well <laughs> Thank yeah. you very much for this nice and interesting talk. And um, uh, let us know. I mean, keep in touch, please. And, and with information about projects you have. And um, yeah, also for, for my German media, I think it's very interesting. Thank you. So, so you're based in Spain, but your your radio program is in Germany. Is that no? I'm correct? I'm a, I'm I'm a correspondent here in in Madrid for German media, but I also collaborate with um, uh, with Spanish media. And then we have a YouTube channel that we call Good News with Accent, where we call where we talk in three languages with uh, in Spanish, German, and English, with people from all over the world that we think that are interesting, that are positive, that have solutions. And to give, uh, I do that together with a, a German TV journalist. We think that the media is too negative. I mean, everything is negative and we get stressed. We get so stressed. Uh, I'm stressed myself. I'm really burn, burned out with all these things that, um, that we have going on and, 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 and there are no solutions given. So, um, we thought we need this channel to give some solutions to the problems we have. Wonderful. You, you know, in my early days in Niger, it was so overwhelming, the, the desertification and the failure of all my efforts at tree planting. And the people actually laughed at me. They called me the crazy white farmer. <laughs> and, then, and then on top of that, famine came. And, and we struggled to get money, to get food, to help people. And, and often just the burden was, was overpowering. But if I could help one person, I, I would hold on to that. And so we can't solve the world's problems, but we can do even one thing. Is it turn the light off when you leave the room? Is it um, write to a politician? Is it give to some climate project or some good cause? You can do something. And then if you influence somebody else, more and more people are coming on board and and before you know it you have a big movement yeah let's hope so and let's hope that even this war probably could change some things in the end in a in a in a good way probably there there is yeah. there is some hope um thank yeah. you very much <laughs> pleasure lovely Although to meet you you go to in some hours you go to bed in australia no right you're 6 p.m now or yes it's, yeah. it's a quarter yeah. to seven yeah, now yeah, yeah 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 okay good night then <laughs> thank you Have bye a good bye. Day. bye bye bye